of sine of 5 pi over 12 by using the sum or difference formula. Uh, we cannot just type in sine 5 pi over 12. It's going to be one of those weird angles, and they want an exact answer. So if you remember what we did yesterday with number 2 was we found two angles on the unit circle that when you add them together or subtract them, uh, you get 165. Now we have to find two angles on the unit circle that when you add or subtract them, you're going to get 5 pi over 12. The problem is, I don't know about you, but I can't really look at all those angles on the unit circle and figure out 5 pi over 12, you know, that's not a calculator. So here's what I recommend. Let's just turn this sucker to degrees. Okay? So, uh, little side problem here. 5 pi over 12 radians, I want to convert that to degrees. Does anybody remember how we convert radians to degrees? Mm -hmm. 180 over pi. 180 over pi, okay. 180 degrees over pi radians, I agree. Radians cancel. I'm multiplying everything here. I'm multiplying everything in the denominator, so uh, I can also cancel out the pi. So now I'm looking at 5 times 180 over 12 equals... probably will need to write some of these on a separate sheet of paper. So, you, you write them down. so sine of 5 pi over 12 is the same thing as saying sine of 75 degrees. Then we write 75 as a sum or a difference of two angles that are on your unit circle. So I write that as plus or minus something. What do you got, Nick? 45 and 30. Rosa, can you read off to me? Uh, actually, Jean, do you have your trick chart out? Uh, yeah. One of those at the bottom left corner, what we talked about yesterday, was these formulas, sine u plus or minus v. Can you read off to me what's on the right hand side? On the summer just for bottom left corner. Okay. Just gonna check it again. Sign u plus minus v. Keep going. Plus or minus cosine u times v. Alright. So in this case, the 45 is the u and the 30 is the V. So just plugging this into the formula, we have sine 45 times the cosine 30. Is it gonna be plus or minus, folks? I've got a plus right here. You go over here to the formula and you say, where's the plus? The plus is on, on the top position. So I'm gonna look over here to see what's on the top position. It's also the plus. So I'll put a plus right there. Uh, cosine u, so cosine 45, sine of v, so sine of, sine of 30. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and look at the unit circle. Call it out to me, class. What's the sine of 45? 32 over 2. Remember, when I say sine, we're looking for the y value. It's cosine, we're looking for the x value. It's cosine 30, call it out. 32 over 2. Oh, is 32 over 2 as well? There's 3 over 2. 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Cosine 45? 32. And sine 30. Fraction, fraction, plus fraction, fraction. So the fraction multiplies. And then multiply the numerator. So root 2 times root 3 is root 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Over here, root 2 times 1 is root 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And so I have fraction plus fraction. Notice I have a common denominator. That's good. So I have the square root of 6 plus square root of 2 all over 4.
Any questions, class? All right, let's try a tricky one over here. Number one. Tangent of pi over 12, by, find that by using a sum or a difference formula. Somebody tell me, what's the first thing we think we're gonna do here? Put in degrees. So pi over 12 radians times 180 degrees over pi radians. <coughs> we'll just multiply through this real quick. So 180 over 12? 15 degrees. Tangent of pi over 12 is equal to the tangent of 15 degrees. So I need to rewrite 15 as the sum or the difference of two angles which are on my unit circle. Haley? Uh, can you give, give me two angles which when I add or subtract them together? Oh, 10 and 5. 10 and 5, but I need them to be on the unit circle. Oh. <coughs> um, can you subtract them? Mm -hmm. uh, 45 and 30. Yes, change the question. Does it matter which one's the least? No. 315. We could use 300 and 315, but you'll find that the first quadrant ones are easier to... So, all right, so Robbie, read off to me the, uh, on the formula chart, <coughs> chart the tangent u plus or minus v. Um, tangent u plus or minus tangent v um, over one minus the cos tangent v dv. That's not a typo, folks. <laughs> Just said it's completely correct. Notice that minus over plus. What that tells me is that if I have a plus, which is in the top position, then I'm also going to be utilizing the plus, which is in the top position, and I'm going to be using the minus in the denominator because that's also in the top position. If I had a minus, then it would be the other situation. So here we go. U So this is tangent 45, plus or minus, folks? On top. On the top. Okay. So some people said minus. Do, do they want to change their answer to plus? Let's look and see what symbol we have right here. This is the minus symbol. Notice where the minus symbol is located. It's on the bottom. So therefore, when I go to this part up here, I'm going to be looking at what symbol is on the bottom, which happens to be a minus. So I'll put a minus. So tangent 45 minus tangent 30 divided by 1. Plus. It says plus. Let's verify. I have something in the minus the lower position, and on that here, the lower position is the plus. It's really not hard once you figure it out, but you need to have it figured out. <coughs> Everybody okay? Have it figured out now? All right. As long as you at least realize that it's not always the same, just because it's minus here doesn't mean it's minus here and minus here, just because it's plus, and you, you, gotta, you gotta look at it. So tangent, 45, Tangent 30. All right, we'll just get this where it gets fun. Uh, let me see your unit circles there and see if you have all the tangent values written around on the unit circle. Oh, no. This is my own. This is not my unit circle. Uh, you do. That's good. Um, oh, no. <laughs> okay, you have that. Change values. Okay. Would anybody like us to, to 
filled it in? I mean, you're going to need them. Not my usual unit circle. Like my other ones at home, I just did it for a little bit. But it's all there, and it's nice and happy. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at more than half of you'll have it or have it at home. This is mine. I incorporate. No, no, I do. I have. I promise. Right, mine's pretty. This is too. All right. I don't know if it's pretty, but I know you have it. Raise your hand if you are in possession of a unit circle that contains the tangent values. Raise your hand high. Oh, not yet. Be proud. Oh, Either whether my, here same or same. at home. Okay. Good the back of my paper. Okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. One, two, three, four, oh, five. Oh. Anybody at that table? No. Anybody at that table? I definitely have No. Okay. I'm going to finish early, and then we'll go through and fi and we'll fill it out in your unit circle real quick. Okay? But I'm going to be stopping my children to cry here. <laughs> All right, so we'll fill it out here with y'all in a few minutes. In the meantime, though, let's go ahead and knock this problem out. Those of you that do have these values written in there, what is the tangent of 45 on your unit circle? One. One. What is the tangent of 30 on your unit circle? Two. I'm hearing three over three. Someone knock from the front table here. One plus tangent of 45, what's tangent of 45? Oh, our table? What? Right on the table, it doesn't matter. What do you got, Nick? It's on three, right? Oh, it is still one. Yeah, okay, you're right. Okay, sorry. All right, so we have one minus root three over three divided by one plus root three over three. Unfortunately, Alex will not accept that answer. We need to do as much to combine these things as possible. It doesn't like fractions or fractions or fractions or fractions. So I'm going to look at this, and I see in the numerator two things that I can definitely combine, um, utilizing a common denominator of three. So how can I turn that one into something that has a three? Three, three over three sounds good. So three over three minus root three over three divided by three over three plus root three over three. Now I can combine them. What's that? This one right here I've turned also into three over three. Oh, this one right here? And from this step to this step, that's how I simplify it. I just one time do three over three. Oh, okay. All right, so now I shall combine these two fractions. So that is going to be three minus root three over three divided by, big fraction bar, three plus root three over three. That's the three, all right? Then, yep, instead of having a fraction divided by another fraction, I'm gonna have a fraction, three minus root three over three, times, the reciprocal of the denominator. So three over three plus root three. I'm put parentheses around all this stuff so you can see what's going on. So I have something times something divided by something times something. Anytime you have everything multiplied by each other, numerator and denominator, then you can start reducing things. So that Three over three, those are gone. But everything else, uh, they're all different. So this is three minus root three over three plus root three. And I think Alex will accept that answer. Okay. Let's turn the page and see. Rosa? Okay. Good, that's good. So there's a good answer. Three minus root three over three plus root three. It's exact. Yesterday we discussed the value of exact answers, or the, well, it's the value. Not in general. So that's good for us. That's probably, ironically, for number one, the hardest and longest problem on this assignment. Maybe you'll get lucky and you'll get something this time for the first time. 
All right, so just to recap, we turned the radians into degrees. We found out some unit circle angles that would add or subtract to equal that. Plugged it into the formula. Looked those values up on the unit circle. Found a common denominator. Then combined them. Did the reciprocal, or multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And got a great answer. All right, let's take things down a notch and do something cool like number four here. Four? Sure. Like number five. <laughs> I've always preferred degrees rather than radians. Okay, so this one says, use a sum or difference formula to find the exact value of the following. Sine 190, cosine 10 degrees, minus cosine 90, sine 10 degrees. That looks familiar. That looks Is it already? kind of like a sine u, cosine v, minus a cosine u, sine v. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah, okay. According to your trig chart, what does that left-hand side equal? Is it a sine or a cosine? Ah, it's a sine. Is that a sine u plus v or a sine u minus v? Double check yourself. She says minus. She says minus. So u minus v. John. So we can uh, conclude here that we have sine of u, so 190 minus. I'm going to simplify going up, which is kind of weird, but it looks like it did down there. So, sine of 190 minus 10, so that's the sine of 180. If you don't have it memorized, look on your unit circle there. What's sine 180? Is it zero? Yeah, okay. 180 is all the way over there, and the up and down value is zero. So, yep. There you go. That is the exact value. So some great stuff pulling from all our previous trig knowledge. Uh, by the way, oh, well, you all have already registered. Anybody taking trig in the spring? Oh, yeah. You'll do great. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, everybody that's taking pre-cal and, and, and goes to all the honors pre-cal, that one where you go to all trig, then uh, the dual credit trig is agreed. All right, so uh, looking here at number four, once again, use the sum or difference formula to find the exact value of the following, cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. All right, ladies first. Ladies, go ahead and turn that radian into degrees. And gents, turn that seven pi over 18 into degrees, please. Stephanie, you got an answer for four, five, or nine? Make sure you have your radius and degrees. Radius, cosine, cosine, degrees, five. <coughs> All right, guys, we got 70. I'm hearing 70. Do I hear validation of that? Ladies, what about y'all? 80. 80? Yeah. All right. Cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Uh, does that look like a sine or a cosine? Cosine? All right. Now here's the ultimate question. Is it minus or plus? 
That is a minus right there, but is this over here going to be a plus or a minus? It's a plus, okay? Look, in, look at the position on where the minus and where the plus is. All right? So, 80 plus 70, I can do that in my head. Cosine 150, you can look on your unit circle. And cosine 150 is what, Rosa? No. 5 pi over 6 is the radian measure of that angle. I'm looking for the cosine. Make it over 3 over 2? So yeah, we're looking for the x value of the thermal point. Are we in agreement, root class? Make it over 3 over 2? Alright, there you go. That's a great, nice summary answer for that one. Now we go to number six. Oh. Right. Ironically, Hello. this is probably one of the easiest. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're like, <laughs> not too bad at all. All right, so, but we do need to do a quick uh, conversion here. So, uh, people who prefer dogs over cats, figure out what 19 pi over 30. Yeah. People who prefer I'll do cat. the other. The other. Cats over dogs take care of pi over 30. I'm guessing you prefer dogs. You should have just said boys or girls in there, right? Because evenly divided. Alright, dog people, what do we get? 114. 114? Okay. Pet folks, what do y'all get? Yeah, I don't really get it. Oh, sorry, that's the cat answer. So. Does this look like a tangent plus or a tangent minus? Plus it is. Plus it is. 114 plus 6 is 120. So once again, those of you all with your tangent on your trig chart, you are to our rescue. See how we did it? We converted to degrees and then we used the other side of the formula to figure this one out and then we did that and then we did this. So, uh, are we in agreement with negative root 3? Okay. Um, would you all like to build the tangents or would you rather just find somebody that has them already written down and copy them down? I mean, we already have some of them. Okay. So, yeah. Talk to somebody else. What you cracking your middle finger? <laughs> Talk to somebody else, verify that you get it. All right, class, today we talked about sum and difference formula. Uh, you have 15 minutes. You might. This might be the best time to knock out some of these problems on the homework. Remember, 26 and 27 are both due Friday.